Hello and welcome to the third in my series of masterclass videos for WaveCloud. In this video, I want to talk about some of the new advanced WaveGlide features that have been added to version 1.03. Now, for any of you that haven't seen my previous masterclass videos, I suggest you go back and watch one and two before trying to follow uh, along with this one. If we switch to the WaveGlide tab, you'll immediately see that things are different in here. The randomize button has been moved to the far right and on the left we have a selector with the uh, letters A, B and C on them and this signifies three independent WaveGlide functions. Now WaveGlide was already quite a sophisticated uh, feature uh, with lots of options to uh, manipulate how to fade and glide between parts of a sound. But if we look at some of the old presets we had uh, in 1.02, there's a couple here by David Collett, which uh, sounded quite impressive with just one wave glide. So let's just preview the original audio file. And using the WaveGlide feature, we turn that into something totally indistinguishable from the original. And this was using a single audio file. Now let's take a listen to another example and listen to the original audio file. And with WaveGlide it becomes... So essentially the waveglide here is just playing between uh, eight nodes and either fading or gliding between uh, various nodes and being told how uh, quickly to do that glide or fade. So as you've seen in previous videos, we can click on a node and then change the options associated with that node. So let's take an in-depth look at what we can now do with three different waveglide nodes. So in this example, we're going to build a patch that has three uh, independent uh, uh, audio files appended end on end in the editor. And then we're going to apply three different wave glides uh, to those to create a unique sound from those three individual sounds. So what we're essentially trying to do is layer three sounds on top of each other, which was impossible in the previous versions of wave glide. Now I'm going to start by uh, pressing the file button and importing uh, this vocal atmosphere kind of sound that I've got here. Notice that according to the file name, this is in B and not in C. So we're going to have to tune this up a semitone at some point. Now if we long press the file button, we'll open up the audio pool manager. And in here we can just click on various samples to preview them. You can also just tap and hold on the ruler and just drag the, your finger along the ruler to audition any sound at a particular point. But what we want to do, we want to append uh, two more samples to this audio buffer. So I'm going to position my cursor right at the end of the audio file and reopen the audio pool. Now I'm going to click on the samples folder and audition some of these samples. Now that would lay well, but I'm looking for something more dramatic. Now I like that gong sound, so I'm just going to press the insert button and that will be inserted at the cursor position. I'm going to position the cursor back on the end of that buffer again and I'm going to go into textures and have a listen to a few of these textures. Uh, 
Okay, I like that one, so let's insert that at the cursor position. Now if I click in the ruler area and just drag my finger across the ruler, uh, we can audition what these uh, sound like. And uh, You'll notice that the uh, vocal sound, the first uh, sound we imported, is a semitone down from the other two, and we need to fix that as part of the wave glide. Now normally you would use the tune button, and we could tune up a semitone, and then uh, the first sample would then be in tune, but unfortunately the other two would not be. So we don't want to change that, we want to put that back as it was. So let's switch to the Wave Glide tab and let's start building our patch. Now I want you to notice that trill at the beginning of the first sample. So to begin with, we need to select which Wave Glide we are using. And the Wave Glide selector is here at the top left. So let's switch to Wave Glide A. And with the cursor position at the beginning of that first audio file, I'm going to press the Add Node button. Now I'm going to tap in the ruler to move the cursor position to roughly 85% through that first sample. And then I'm going to insert another node. Now those samples are assigned to C3. So if I hold C3, we can hear the waveglide. Now it's currently fading from node 1 to node 2. And it's also pausing on node 1 for a second. So to fix that we're going to change the transition mode to glide and then press C3 to audition that again. Now it's gliding from node 1 to node 2 but it's it's been held at node 1 for a second. And to change that we need to change the whole time to 0. Now I'm going to double the transition time uh, from 1 to 2 so that we can actually better hear that trill at the beginning of the first audio file. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's switch to Wave Glide B and overlay the second file uh, over the top of the first. So I'm going to zoom in a bit with Pinch to Zoom and then position the cursor close to the beginning of that second audio file. When I'm happy with that, I'm going to press the Add Node button to add a node to the Wave Glide. Now I'm going to reposition the cursor near the end of that file where it fades out and press the add node button to add a second node. Then I'm going to click on node 1 and then set the transition to glide, just like we did before. Now don't forget to enable wave glide B. Now just like before it's holding on node 1 for a second so we need to adjust the hold time for node 1. And I'm going to increase the transition time to 2.5 seconds. Now you can hear a double hit on that bell, so I'm going to zoom in, uh, reposition the cursor nearer that wave 2, and then hit the set button to move that to uh, node 1 position. And I'll try again. Now at this point I want to uh, select Wave Glide A and fix that, the fact that the first sample is out of tune. Now there are two ways to do this. You can select each node in turn and then set the uh, node pitch to plus one semitones. And you can do that for each of the nodes. Uh, an alternative method is to hold down the shift button and then when you change any of the options for a single node, it will change for all nodes. So let's preview what we've got. So now you can hear that both uh, audio files are playing back at the same time and are both at the same pitch. So let's turn our attention to Wave Glide C. And as we did before, I'm going to position my cursor at the beginning of, of the third wave and then add another node in there. Then position the cursor roughly 85%, roughly through that file where it sounds good, and then add a second node. 
Now as we did previously I'm going to select node 1 and change the transition mode to a glide and then uh, change the hold time to 0 as we did before and increase the, uh, the transition time to something a little bit bigger. In this case I've gone with 3 seconds. And don't also forget to turn on the uh, Wave Glide 3 with the Enable button. Now I think it would sound better if that first audio file fa faded out towards the end. So I'm going to select Wave Glide A and then select the second node and I'm going to change the volume level to that, of that second node down to 0 0.5 maybe so it's only half the volume. Okay so let's see what that sounds like. So I think you get the idea now we've layered three different audio files and they're all playing back at the same time. Now we could enhance that even further by adding more nodes to the uh, third wave file so that it actually doubles back on itself and has a more continuous flow. But uh, I think this serves as a good example of what we can now do with Wave Glide that we couldn't do in previous versions. Now in this example we simply uh, used the glide function to glide from one part of the uh, wave to another. Uh, but I want to talk about how different transition modes affect the way we transition between node pitches. So I'm going to start with this uh, male choir type sound. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three separate nodes uh, to the wave glide. And uh, I'm going to space them apart uh, so we can see the transition that I'm making from one wave glide to another. Now for this example I want to set the transition time of all nodes to be uh, uh, 2 seconds. So I'm going to hold down the shift button and uh, change the uh, transition time here to 2 seconds and that will uh, set that for all nodes. And I'm also going to make sure that the hold time is set to 1 second for each node. Now because I know this is a recording in the key of C, I'm going to select the second node and jump that up 5 semitones and then select the third node and increase that to 7 semitones. I think if memory serves me correct that's C, F and G. And finally with the uh, shift held down I'm going to change the transition mode to glide. So let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Now with shift hold down let's change the transition mode to fade and see how that sounds. And finally let's set the transition mode to jump and hear that in action. Now hopefully you could hear the differences between the modes, but let's go over them again. So in glide mode, we glide from one pitch to another, rather like a portamento. As fade mode suggests, it fades between the pitches. And with jump, we actually jump in between pitches. Now it's important to note that any operation you carry out on a particular wave glide is specific to that wave glide. So if I, for instance, long press the delete button uh, on wave glide A, it will only delete the contents of wave glide A. It won't affect either B or C. Now we've moved the randomize button to the far right of this display and the randomize button now works on a per wave glide basis. So if we're currently on wave glide B and we come in here 
and randomize a waveguide it will randomize a waveguide for waveguide B so if I uh, close this window and uh, change to waveguide A for instance or C uh, there's nothing there at the minute now I'm going to go into waveguide A and I'm going to randomize a default waveguide now this will randomize a number of nodes and if we change the randomize mode to keep existing and we select the velocity and pitch options here then when we randomize we'll be randomizing those new uh, uh, values for uh, volume and pitch those are the two new additions to this waveglide in 1.03 now one feature that you could use alongside the uh, waveglide uh, or orbit modes for that matter is a new feature called file lock. Now you can enable file lock by pressing this button uh, to the right of the file drop down menu and this toggles file lock on and off. But what does it do? Well if we head off to the examples folder and uh, click on these examples you'll see that uh, each example loads a wave file and in this case these two files have orbit and the third one has a wave glide now if we flip back to the first one orbit one and we turn on the file lock and then attempt to load another preset you'll notice that the file the audio file remains the same it loads in the uh, additional features uh, for that preset but retains the same original audio file so it's a quick way to apply an orbit or waveglide from a different preset to the currently selected file now the last thing I want to talk about today is a couple of new additions to 1.03 in particular remote recording and the ability to record um, input from another app um, using the remote record feature now we've exposed a few more parameters this time round and uh, one of them is this record option which allows remote recording uh, without actually having to open the interface as you can see from the AU parameters we've added a few more additional uh, extras uh, we can uh, alter the position now the grain position of where the grain starts to play and uh, be able to control that remotely too so you can play around with those now to go along with the remote recording you can now uh, set a maximum record length and you do that by long pressing the record button in here we can choose uh, the append mode as well record append mode but most importantly we can set the maximum record length it was currently set to 60 seconds but you can now I think go up to three minutes uh, those uh, options are now echoed in the settings so you can set them there if you wish and the other thing is we've added a record monitor button to the uh, edit options toolbar so it's uh, great to be able to turn this on when you are recording from an external source and you want to hear that source even when you're not in the recording process so that's just about it for this video uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thumb up the video if you like what you see and we'll see you next time